Let's open to Luke chapter 8 with verse 40. Um, now when Jesus returned, the crowd, the crowd welcomed him, for they were all waiting for him. Just then there came a man named uh, Jairus, a leader of the synagogue. He fell at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house, for he had only for he had an only daughter, about 12 years old, who was dying. And as he went, the crowds pressed on him. Now there was a woman who had been suffering for hemorrhages for 12 years. And though she had spent all she had on physicians, no one could cure her. She came up behind him and touched the fringe of his clothes. And immediately her hemorrhage stopped. Then Jesus asked, Who touched me? Then all denied it. Peter said, Master, the crowds surround you and pressed in on you. But but Jesus said, Someone touched me, for I noticed that power had gone out of me. When the woman saw that she could not remain hidden, she came trembling, and falling down before him, she declared in the presence of all people why she had touched him, and how she had been immediately healed. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Go in peace. Amen. Sit back down now. People, when they come to a church, people, when they come close to Jesus, to God, they are, at a certain, uh, a certain time point, any man, when they have a problem, People that uh, touch God and try to receive healing from Him usually come after a great loss. It says that uh, troubles save people. Christ saves people through, but but trouble exposes people to this this these difficult questions and this need of God. If I die, where am I going? If I If something, if an accident happens in my life, is my soul at peace? Who will Christianity work? Will, will this, this coming to church, will it help me at all in that day? Is God better with me? Because look at how many problems I have. People have questions. Or oh, does God exist? This can also happen. Always know that a problem, a big problem, gives birth to a great uh, desperation. The bigger the problem, the greater the desperation that you have to find the answer to your problem, which in many cases could be God. A big problem always gives birth to great spiritual uh, needs and wants. Look at this woman. The word of the Lord says that she was sick. Physically, for 12 years, she was sick, old, and who was dying. She had hemorrhages. Today, this could uh, be solved that by by history and by different various methods in, in the hospital. But back then, this medicine wasn't that advanced. The woman theoretically had no chance back then. She had a disease through which today, if uh, medicine doesn't intervene at the right time, you could still die. And it's an old disease. The word the Lord says because this. Uh, attacked her uh, m more and more. The, the, uh, this disease attacked her, her soul because a uh, lack of trust, uh, lack of, of, of uh, peace uh, worries the heart. I pray that our problems would also be short term and would, would be short term and, and we eventually find answers to them. But this woman had a long, this problem in. in for a long time now. We all carry problems and, and worries in our soul. Uh, women that are married also have uh, write to me and say that they have big children and they remember exactly uh, things that happened to them 30 years ago when, uh, when something happened to them or whatever. There's no night that doesn't pass. I had a woman that wrote to me and said that she remembers exactly every second when uh, someone um, abused her. Spiritually, she was at the ground, this woman. Economically, she was ruined. She tried with all the doctors and all the, all the physicians and all the money went down the drain and 
yet she was still unhealthy. If you notice, all things usually come at one time. Uh, a wave caused the other, says the Bible. We're all tied and interconnected in this, in this life to a strange, weird way. If you're not healthy, you can't work. If you, know, you can't work, you don't have money. You need money to pay for the doctors, procedures and operations. Well, it's all one big cycle, isn't it? The moment when you see that uh, you're under this curse to not have, all of a sudden you feel that something's not right with you. But something between you and God, you and your husband, you and your wife, you take your luggage, you leave. She couldn't have children. Her pain was weird. We don't speak about this woman, I want to speak about another one now. And she couldn't have children. And after five years, she said that I've had enough patience, says the wife. And after, after he found out that he couldn't have children, he left. So it wasn't enough that she had this pain that she couldn't have children. And this pain was obviously great enough. She also remained by herself, truly by herself. Her husband left. Until then, she knew that, you know, maybe we can carry on going. Husband, wife, happy, happy ever after. We could adopt maybe someone, a child. We could go to Africa. <laughs> take from there if we can't take anyone from Romania. We'll find a solution. Well, now she has no more solution. Her husband left. She was ruined economically, socially uh, marginalized. Having her marriages, this um, child could she couldn't have a child. Her husband couldn't do anything. She was unclean socially. In church, she had to sit at the back back then. And she wasn't allowed to, to have anything to do with anyone. Whoever she touched, he became unclean. Uh, back then, especially uh, if we speak back to the women from the, from the Bible, she was even more exiled. If she touched anyone, they'd be unclean. They'd have to wait seven days and do the whole ritual that you see written in uh, Numbers and Deuteronomy. She was allowed uh, not to have any... Uh, formal status in society. This woman was truly at the ground. She had nothing. These, these types of people need a significant miracle and touch in their life because they are desperate. You, know, you guys will never repent and, until you become truly desperate for God. Desperate before this world, when this world, when you find out that God is your only solution. This desire to, to meet God only uh, usually comes after you have a big problem. When usually the problems are small, you can meet with a lawyer, with a doctor. When the, the, your issue is small, you can meet up with a friend to solve it. When there's a big problem, you can only meet with God. When you find out that no one can help you. And, you know, I won't leave this place until I tell you guys that no one will never understand you like He will, like God will. No one, because there's no other solution for you. If the woman says, if only I can touch him, if I can touch the, the, the back of his shirt. You know, she didn't want to touch the, the Lord's, uh, Jesus' head because it was unusual. You know, he's the teacher. You don't just come and, and uh, you put your hand on his head. You can't just shake his hand because, you know, it, was, it wasn't right. You know, uh, this woman, what could she have done? <laughs> you know, she couldn't have approached him like a... No, like a, like a normal person. So she came at the back and just touched the the, the back of of um, Jesus's uh, shoes, I think. Only God can save you and heal you today. I don't know if you still have any hope, anything other than uh, God. But maybe after this half an hour, I hope that you only have God left. We lose all hope in anything else. Uh, let's, let's sing a song that is, uh, is perfect for you. Only He understands you in His big pain, in your big pain. <laughs> I see you guys worried, frustrated. I'll keep my sermon short this morning. You know, you look in the mirror. Many times you see yourself frustrated at the ground without hope. And this is an old song from a long time, about 20, 30 years when I heard it first. Let's uh, sing it together this morning.
this is what I wanted to tell you this morning because it was much easier to explain by the song. There are moments when only God still cares about you. And at that moment, with this desire for something to, for his desire to change your life, this divine respect is, is, birth, is born in you for him. No, Jesus Christ is, is amazed. He turns, stops all of a sudden. Imagine this picture, you know, all of a sudden Christ stops. Hey, something happened. There's no greater joy than for God to be amazed about your faith. To say, you know, not even in Israel have I seen faith this big. Yeah. Christ says, you know, look what, look what happened. It's an extraordinary thing. A woman, someone, someone touched me. Who touched me? Who touched me? Peter says, uh, Master, the crowd surrounds you and press and, and pressing you. But Jesus says, someone touched me for I noticed the power had gone. Yeah, many people come and touch me and I shake their hands and I pray for them. And many times we pray for many people and they come to me saying that I'm the only hope and they... And, you know, there's this different touches. Some touches are made with faith and others are probably done out of, you know, just this, you know, someone's just used to constantly being prayed for. But people have, have become used to everything. You know, God says many touch me, but if you have the faith, and all of a sudden Christ appreciates this, this respect that the woman had. She came to him with great respect, not at the front, and said, you know, I'm sick, what do you think about me? You're going, you have to, well, are you just going to walk past carelessly? No, fantastic respect. She came at the back and touched his, his clothes. And secondly, the word of the Lord says that Christ appreciated the discernment. You know, the, he was full of disciples around him, but the woman didn't stop at any one of the disciples, but came straight to Christ. You know, right now we can, uh, you can go to, to any worker of God. You know, we can all, you know, maybe she didn't stop to see Peter. She didn't stop to see John, to any other disciples, the great disciples that we could recognize. And many of you in this search of God, you've stopped that holy men of God. And these holy people done everything they did and what they could. And maybe they weren't able to take your problems away. And you've, you've stopped. You've stopped your search for God. We have many, you, if you try to resemble yourself to people or you look to people for help, they may disappoint you. And these people, this, this woman, didn't stop at any other people around God, not at Matthew, not at Thomas, not at any other disciples because she wanted, straight to, she wanted to go straight to the source, straight to God. Many people stop looking at Christ. They look at workers, at priests and other holy people. No. If you have relationships with this church, you will be saved. If you go to the one across the street, you won't be saved at all. No, it doesn't mean anything. You know, some I've heard people say that some churches save you less than others. Some churches take you to purgatory. Some churches take you to hell, to heaven. No, dear people, stop. Christ says that when you search for me, search directly for me, not for anyone else. You that have spent half your life, those of my generation that were under communism, we ate uh, other stuff. For, for we we ate uh, we didn't eat bread like proper bread. We ate some crappy makeshift bread. We didn't drink proper coffee. We drank some some makeshift uh, coffee. We never had uh, original uh, things because. Uh, Communists didn't care for us. We want to go straight to the source, straight to the original, straight to the one that gives us power. We want to go straight to God, not to any other worker. No one of us is without sin in this church. Not even the holiest of you. Christ appreciates this desper desperation that the woman had. She didn't come and put conditions forward to him. You know, she came and exposed herself publicly as well. There was no healing in it that was hidden. You know, there was no little ticket that was sent forward to, the, to, to Christ. You're not desperate enough. You know, dear pastor, please, my mom said, hospital, please don't come now. Come in the evening. We don't want uh, our, our family to see that you've come to pray for the mother. I go at night between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. when no one's around. Well, you're not desperate enough then, aren't you? 
you that when you had your problems not only did you uh, not stop along the uh, holy people of God but as desperate as you were you put your head straight away towards God but maybe the other, few, other ones and did this patient put their head in every hospital possible in every doctor possible that's why God can't work many times because you choose to avoid him Christ says who's greater than me the Sabbath or, or the rules or me the Sabbath was made for man, not man for the Sabbath. When when the Pharisees came and, and chastised against Christ for healing a person during Sabbath day, Christ says, nothing can kill me, nothing can stop me. If that woman came and, and stood at the queue to uh, talk to Christ, maybe she would have died in her disease. Of course, the priests and the Pharisees told her that, you know, don't go to Christ, to Jesus, come to us at a synagogue and temple and we'll pray for you. Don't go to Christ. If people would have stopped her, you know, when you're desperate, you no longer care about anyone, what, what, about what anyone says. You know, oh, you, you give up on everything, you go to Christ. So Christ appreciates not only the desperation that this woman had, but the respect, and Christ acts accordingly. This is how I see Christ. You could have said, you know, this woman could have said, hey, Christ has no time for me. What could he do for me for a woman that's so, in so much pain? And Christ thinks uh, the other way around. You know, there's one soul that needs me here. You know, forget everyone else. The whole crowd goes and extracts the person that's in need and says, hey, hey, you, I want to heal you now. You know, other folks would say, you know, you're just a drop in an, in an ocean. You're insignificant. You're at the back. No one sees you. No one cares about you. You're not insignificant. Dear friend, Christ loves you. Right in the center of his attention, Christ says, I'll give everyone up because I care about you more. I want to save you. But the woman says, you know, don't worry. It's not. But Christ says, you know, I, I couldn't care any less about the crowd. I want to save you. You know, Christ was going towards the house of the rich man and he stopped. The Bible says that he literally stopped. You know, uh, Jerry said, asked him to come here with his daughter, but he said, you know, calm down you. It's fine. You know, uh, <laughs> in the meantime, Jerry's daughter also died. You know, Christ says that it's so hard for, is it so hard for me to resurrect the person? It's just as easy for me to resurrect the person from the dead as the human person from any sickness. When Christ sees the amount of the, 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 the amount of faith in you, He'll give up anyone and everything to help you. When He hears your pain, your frustration, your your shouts, in, in the desperation and full full of fill with faith, this Christ will stop at anything to save you. You know, when Christ looks at you and says, "I like you." He gives you amazing privileges. All of a sudden, that woman becomes his main focus point. You know, she was on the periphery on the side. She thought that she was useless, but Christ says, no, you're, you're central. I want to save you now. You know, have you ever felt like you're the third wheel or the fifth wheel? When you feel like you're extra. When you're no longer young, rich, uh, you no longer have your charm anymore, you no longer have your... your, your Workplace. That's when Christ likes you most. That's when I love you most. When people reject you, especially when they reject you for His name. Christ doesn't just save here. Christ saves on on the rooftop of this, this place, in the junk of this earth, in the periphery on this this city, of anywhere in this world. Christ maybe then take you in the middle of the of of uh, a. a mass of holy people it takes you in the out of the, the junk of this world and saves you to, to this day I pray that God may God help us touch him in prayer or touch him physically because with Christ you can touch you can touch Christ many times many times Christ has touched me through his word and there's no greater joy to know that Christ has spoken to me and that I'm here at communion and that Christ will touch us and heal us today through communion and this is a great privilege, you know, to dine with, with God. Extraordinary. To dine with God. There was a meeting uh, a couple of, of days ago some, uh, with the, the uh, Prime Minister 
of the, the of our city a director and then he called us uh, after the meeting to to, uh, to eat with him you know doctors professors pastors I told him that I'm not going he says why am I not going I said uh, you know I'm gonna eat with my hand I'm not very uh, <laughs> I'm not a very well educated man I presume that you won't like me there you feel extra you feel like you don't belong many of us aren't blessed because we don't realize many times that God is just a hand stretch away and you just look around and say God please bless me somehow somewhere if most Christians look up oh, Holy Spirit please come you know why are you looking for him because he's already in you oh come come here who brought you here who convinced you that you're a sinner <laughs> what more do you all the Holy Spirit's only in you if you consider and you see yourself as a sinner know that the Holy Spirit's in you and the Holy Spirit convinces you of this don't hold don't just hold the Holy Spirit for yourself it be an open flowing river give it to other people speak to other people because you have great privileges you know, you're a daughter you're a child of, of God you don't only just have this privilege but you have obligations big obligations to spread the kingdom to expand the kingdom when you're a daughter or son of, of a king. We need to spread God's message. We need to spread the kingdom. If Christ has touched me and healed me, put his hand over me, it, it's my turn to do the same. You don't realize how important this is to shake one another's hands, to bless one another, to hug a man sometimes. Christ used to take children in their arms. This, this woman was allowed to be healed to be touched by God to, to the blind he put his hands over the blind people's eyes Christ could heal them with his uh, with his word with word of mouth but not only that he, he touched them as well he laid his hands over them you put your arm over him I told you, you guys many times shake one another's hands because the only handshake that that man may have had today or the whole week and he waits another Sunday for someone to come and shake his hand again you guys may need to be a blessing for others. We can give our hearts, a lot of, uh, uh, we could give ourselves a lot of sense and purpose. We can make life beautiful. I spoke on last Sunday morning, I think, in Romania, and I know the, how the story continues. A woman wrote to me that got baptized. And I thought she was doing fine. But you see, if you look after clothes, you know, you know, this man is, this person is dressed well, she's doing fine. And I, that's how I thought. And she wrote me an email saying how God, until she got baptized, but since she got baptized, does so many miracles. And she told me about a miracle about not last week, the week before. Uh, around Saturday or Friday and the woman said she's going home and I had in my pocket eight uh, eight pounds and 20p and I went to buy milk and I realized that I didn't have enough bread enough money to, to buy a big uh, milk bottle for my daughter and uh, so I bought it and I was left with around I also bought some some uh, bread and, and pastries for, her. and I was left with around one pound thirty fifty left. My husband uh, had left me in a different life, chose someone else, and the one said that I started crying and I started eating my uh, pastry, one of the pastries that I had, and the other one for my daughter. And I was annoyed that I couldn't bring her a big bottle of milk at home. And she said. You know, I was looking on the phone all of a sudden. I, when I saw my family saw that I was close to coming home and I saw on the floor three ten pound backnuts. I looked around, there was absolutely no one. Three ten pound backnuts and three one pound backnuts. Three three one pounds. And you know, I didn't see anyone around and I thought that was like God had gave it to me. You know, it was amazing. How what a beautiful miracle. And the miracle that, that many of us wouldn't care for in, in Romanian money 30, 3, 
10, 10 pound banknotes would equivalent to around 7 British pounds. And I found the money and I took it, says the woman. And, and a, a I took the money to, to church. And the pastor of the church um, heard a voice and, and a brother came to the ch to the sister and said, here's the money to have milk for the whole year. And she was so happy when she received the money. And when she uh, she went to the, the plate of money came around to her, she threw all the money that she found on the floor in the plate. I didn't know what she did. I didn't know that next day, Monday. I heard how <laughs> that money uh, plunged, you know, did a somersault in the end, right into the plate. And I said, why did you give that money? I spoke to her immediately. I said, Pastor, the church has bigger problems than mine. <laughs> the church needs milk a lot more than I do. And says, if I hold this money, what other miracles am I going to see in the next few months? Uh, and I said, how would God be without an explosion of miracles, without an explosion of amazement? How boring would life be? But tonight we'll see how people, when they get baptized tonight, they are a miracle of God. And here, here is a different miracle of God because only God is underneath this, uh, is in, is underneath this place. That through His Holy Spirit makes the bread transform into His body and the wine into His, his blood. Only God could do this. Doctors call every physician, every priest to come and try. Even Luther, if he'd come, nothing will change. You know why? Because God does miracles among us. Let's all stand up. <laughs>